Welcome to the show, Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute in Longwood, Florida. Very, very close. If you want to just plan a little trip to Longwood, there's fine shopping there. And, of course, you can also find a great deal of stores for shopping, restaurants for eating, and, of course, the Stages of Life. And So, Doctor, I wanted to talk to you today about compounding pharmacies. We hear about that, but I don't think the public really understands what a compounding pharmacy really is. Well, you're going to be hearing a lot more about this because this may be the next scandal to hit your newspaper. You know, if you're one of the last people in in town to actually read a newspaper, you're going to start seeing articles basically about how many of these Florida compounding pharmacies have been doing bad things to the federal government through TRICARE and other commercial carriers. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. Okay, this is going to be hundreds of millions of dollars. Before it's done, there'll probably be some jail time involved for some of these individuals, and the indictments are coming down in January. That's January of 2016, in case this thing turns into a rerun in the future. Okay, so what is this all about? Well, a compounded medication is something that's very, very important to me in my practice. I've been using compounding pharmacy for 35 years. Very, very important. It's important to you, and it's important to the medical community. In fact, that little mortar and pestle that you see as the logo for many of the pharmacies is what a compounding pharmacist and what a pharmacy used to be. You didn't go to the pharmacy for pills. The doctor gave you those. If something had to be made, you went to the pharmacist. In 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 Britain, in, in France, they called them the chemist. And here's how it works. The doctor would come up with something that they would need, and because one size doesn't fit all, you would get a prescription to the compounder and your medicine would be made for you. And more times than not, it would be made for you fairly reasonably in terms of cost. You know, it may take a day or two or more to get it because after all, it's handmade. It's like a handmade cookie. Mm. It's going to take some time for this thing to be produced. But in every industry, in every business, in every time, and in every era, there are going to be people that are going to take advantage of the situation. And this has happened in compounding pharmacy like you wouldn't believe. So I use a lot of compounded uh, hormone creams. Okay, so my average patient, my typical uh, prescription will cost that patient about $22 a month, $30 max, okay? Mm -hmm. There are doctors out there that don't know how to do this exactly well or their relationship with a compounder results in prescriptions that may be $100 to $200 per month. That's a very significant difference, but it's not the reason for the show. Okay, I don't really care about that. Okay, my patients I care about, other patients I don't care so much about, but this I do care about as a former serviceman and a taxpayer. uh, Some of these compounding pharmacists discovered that TRICARE didn't pay attention. Go figure. Mm. Federal government not paying attention. Uh Oh, so what they would do is they would have these sweetheart deals with certain compounding pharmacies that did business with TRICARE. And instead of these prescriptions costing 80 to 100 bucks, 50 bucks, they might be as much as 15 to 20 thousand dollars per month. Oh, if that sounds like a lot of money to you, it sounds like a lot of money to me. Well, None of these medications are worth that. So, you know, Robin, as an example, went and had some foot surgery. Her podiatrist, in good faith, sent a prescription to a particular pharmacy, notorious for this, and they'll probably not be in business when it's all said and done, and they wanted to set her up with a uh, wound cream. Okay, something that you would do to keep the scar down. And they yeah. kept calling her and calling and calling and calling and calling, trying to get this prescription to be filled. She refused. Why? Because I sent her to one of one of our affiliated compounders where she was able to get it for about sixty dollars. The wow. wound cream at this other place is over fifteen hundred. But after all, she shouldn't really care because her Blue Cross was going to pay for it anyway. Not so mm. fast. If you think that your premiums keep going up every year just for grins, it's for abuses such as this that cause it. So you have to be aware that many of the compounders are perfectly great pharmacists, wonderful businessmen, and ethical. But there are a significant number that are not. And if you start getting telephone calls from these clowns, you need to hang up, okay? Because it's more than likely going to be a problem for you, your insurance company, and certainly for your doc, who may not know what's going on. Now, I would like to believe, I would absolutely like to believe that the, that the uh, physicians are not getting a kickback for this. But I certainly know that the salespeople that go to sell these things to the docs get a very, very substantial, uh, oh, let's just say, paycheck for this. Mm -hmm. So the the process here is very unseemly, very disturbing to me, and very costly to society. This is hundreds, 
of millions of dollars that go out every year just to try care, okay, in wow. fraudulent prescriptions. What's fraudulent about it? I am hard pressed to see how a pain cream, okay, and I've written textbook chapters on pain creams, should cost more than sixty to eighty dollars, a hundred dollars at the very most. But what in the world would cause these ordinary medications? which if you bought them in powder form would cost no more than six or seven dollars, why should it be oh. 10,000, 15,000, or, or even a, just $1,500? You're talking mm -hmm. something that's the pharmacist's time. Their time is valuable. The, the, the facilities are expensive. So if you had to pay 80 or 100 bucks for something that's handmade, okay, I get it. I've done that for many, many years for myself. But $15,000, is abuse and they should go to jail and my suspicion is is that a good number of them will it was about six months ago on this very show that you were discussing compounding pharmacies there was one in tampa i believe that got slapped hard by the government for actually causing a lot of illness they well it was the wrong North, things in right? wasn't tampa it was it was actually up in the northeast oh okay yeah the, the tampa connection was was one of the doctors locally is their medical director Oh, there you go. Okay, I hey. haven't heard too much from him. I'm not sure why. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he, he's he's kind of gone undercover mm -hmm. or is is secluded someplace. If you get my drift, and what happened there was very very interesting. The compounders there were doing something called sterile compounding. Not a problem under most circumstances. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? These are for injectables, and you do need to make sterile injectables. Not that hard to do. You have to pass the liquid through a, a very very fine uh, filter. You make sure that your technique is sterile. You can either you can irradiate it if you want to to keep these things sterile, and off you go. What happened there was very interesting. These clowns didn't follow sterile procedure oh. to, to the extent where many of their products were visibly contaminated. And were that, a nut, were that bad enough? They marketed these things to the doctors for intrathecal. That's into your spine use. Well, there's one thing to give somebody an injection. Okay, it's something else to go intravenously. But it's something entirely different to stick it directly into the spinal canal where you have no protection from infection. And a bunch mm. of people died. A lot more people got sick. And what it did was it changed that entire industry to the point where many of them can't do sterile compounding at all because they, the feds came down on them and they threw the baby out with the bathwater, mm -hmm. something the feds do extraordinarily well. They don't protect us well. They certainly don't tax us particularly well. They don't educate us well. But they do have a particular skill for throwing babies out with the bathwater, and they did it with mm -hmm. that one. At the end of the day, how does the average consumer, what are some of the things they can be doing to know that they're getting quality when they do buy a medicine? Well, the first thing you need to realize is that if somebody's calling you on the phone asking you to buy something, it's probably not good value. It's certainly not good medicine, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make a great deal of sense. So what do you do in terms of value? Use, use your brains. Okay, just stop and think it through. What in the world could possibly be worth $1,000 a month? Okay, well, some of these injectables, these biologicals for HIV, some of these things for hepatitis, they're certainly worth it. You know, you can cure many of the serotypes of hepatitis C. The medications don't come for free, but you're actually getting something for it. This is a marvelous use of, of funds. So is it expensive? Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's well worth mm -hmm. it. But when you're looking at something like, gee, I'm going to give you a scar cream, which, by the way, you can pick up locally for about 60 bucks. OK, and it's going to be fifteen hundred to two thousand. But don't worry about it, because if your insurance doesn't pay for it, we won't charge you. That, by the way, is called insurance fraud. If they if they mm. send, if they if they charge the insurance company for it and they don't bill you, it is fraudulent. So there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be getting funny bills for this stuff and are going to wonder why. Well, they promised me I wouldn't have to pay for it. Guess what? They lied. Wow. How closely does the FDA or whatever government agency, how closely do they watch these clinical trials that we're always hearing about on the radio? OK, here's how clinical trials work. Okay, so you have a problem and you have a medication and intervention. So the individuals that they tested against, okay, are not supposed to be taking any other medications. Okay, single, they, 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 these, are, these are single drug Whoa. trials. Well, this doesn't happen very often, whether they're double-blinded, placebo-controlled or not. How many of your, your friends, okay, are not taking any other medications? Yeah, that's crazy. Of course it's crazy. So if you're going to go out and say, well, gee, they tested this medication and it's, it's got science behind it, I would have to prove to you without a 
a shadow of a doubt, okay, that there were never any studies that looked at your particular circumstance with your constellation of other comorbidities and medications. And guess what? It is a big joke. So my advice to you is to use your own common sense, your eyes and your ears. Research your uh, your own uh, situation. Don't go to WebMD. It's pretty well useless. Uh, what you want to do is to go to the National Library of Medicine. The site's called PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D, and practice with it. Okay, and what you can do is you can start learning a lot of data, and this is all primary source stuff. This is where the real researchers go to get their real data. This is where I do my research. This is where I do my reading. And then you draw your own conclusions. From this, you can go to a trusted, uh, let's say, a, a counselor, sometimes known as a doctor, and ask, gee, given this information, is this conclusion reasonable? Or is it unreasonable? Is this course of action reasonable or is it unreasonable? And if the doctor isn't willing to look at the research, you need to do a little bit of research on finding another doctor. All right, very good. Robin, nutraceuticals are the way to go in my life, so where can I go? At Stages of Life. Give us a call at 407-679-3337. Visit us on the web at stagesoflife.net. Uh, we're also on Facebook at Stages of Life Medical Institute. You can like us and you'll find all sorts of information there. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5. And the health store is open during those office hours and you're welcome to come in, wander about, see what we have. Everything that Dr. Klein talks about, we do carry in the health store, in the health store, 